All right, guys, today I wanted to talk about something that I think is important for this season. We've seen Rudy Gobert taking corner threes in practices with Hassan Whiteside and Dwayne Wade. But the question is, should Rudy Gobert actually be taking threes in NBA games? Let's talk about it. It's the Hoops Nerd Show. All right, guys, so uh, this is something that Jazz fans have been talking about, not necessarily just the corner three, but kind of how to make Rudy Gobert better on offense. Uh, Rudy Gobert, defensively, we all know how good he is. And if anyone tells you anything other than Rudy Gobert is, other than that Rudy Gobert is the best defender in the NBA or one of uh, the best defenders in the NBA, if anyone says anything but that, they're incorrect. Rudy Gobert defensively is an absolute monster, one of the greatest defensive players we ever, we've ever we ever seen in the history of the game. Just hands down, that's, that's just a fact. And he's going to be a Defensive Player of the Year candidate this year again. And if the Jazz can somehow figure out how to have their perimeter defenders defend better in the in the playoffs and things, you could see the Jazz going very far. But that's a that's a topic for another day. What we're talking about today is Rudy Gobert's offense. And last season in game, you know, in the game six of the, the playoffs with the Clippers and in multiple games before that, we saw that really the issue with Rudy Gobert, Rudy Gobert was not the defense. If, if people are telling you that, they're incorrect. What it was and where there was an argument to be had was Ru Rudy Gobert's offensive game. You know, I actually in my last video before this, and if you want to go have a fun time, go read the comments. I, I had a back and forth with someone about Rudy Gobert and whether he should shoot threes. And this commenter who seemed to be uh, very intent on letting me know how he disagreed with me said that it would be silly that I would even consider the idea that Rudy Gobert should shoot a three-pointer. And that Rudy Gobert, as a rolling big, big, big man, that's his most effective role. Now, guess what? The thing is, is I agree. Rudy Gobert as a role man is one of the most effective offensive players in the NBA in terms of his efficiency and his production. If you go look at Rudy Gobert's production, he's shooting 60-70% from the field, and that's incredibly efficient. If you're doing that and doing it at a relatively high volume, with which Rudy Gobert does, Rudy Gobert's usually averaging around 14 points per game on super high efficiency. So Rudy Gobert is going to show up super high on, on all the different offensive metrics. He just is. His offensive game is ultra efficient. He doesn't take bad shots. And, and so someone on, uh, someone who knows all these things is going to make a comment and say, why would you ever have Rudy Gobert taking a shot that isn't super efficient? What makes Rudy Gobert good offensively is his efficiency. Yes, that is correct. But what happens is when you're in the playoffs and Rudy Gobert is doing that rolling, uh, rolling game, other teams are scheming for that. And in a series, in a seven game series where you're playing the same same team every single night, teams are going to figure out how to guard the Jazz offensively. And when you only have Rudy Gobert rolling to the rim, it becomes something that other teams try different things and eventually they they figure out the scheme and they kind of figure you out. And we've seen that the last two seasons with the Utah Jazz. The first time we saw it, or not the first time, but the, we saw it against Denver in the bubble where the Jazz were up 3-1 against the Denver Nuggets. The Denver Nuggets kind of figured out what the Jazz do offensively, and they they made it difficult, and they stopped it by the end of the series. The Jazz could barely score, especially in the final game in Game 7. You go watch that game. That Jazz team struggled to score, and we're not getting enough production from Rudy Gobert, uh, and that's why people start asking questions. Well, should we do, be doing something different? Well, the next season comes. The The Jazz go to the playoffs. They do they do pretty well against the... they Not pretty well. They... They, besides missing game one because they didn't have Donovan Mitchell, they they swept the Grizzlies. They go to the next round. The Los Angeles Clippers try all sorts of different lineups throughout that series. And by the end of the series, they absolutely destroy the Jazz. And part of that was because they figured out the Jazz's defense, which is, like we said, a video for another day. But offensively, the Jazz could just not score in that second half. And everyone in their dog is saying, well, what if Rudy Gobert could figure out how to score inside, that would solve solve everything. If he could just dunk over, you know, six foot Terrence Mann or whoever it is, or Patrick Beverly or whoever. And to a point, they're correct. And we saw actually in the, in the Olympics that Rudy Gobert was getting the ball in the post against good USA defenders in that, uh, in that Olympic game. 
and actually doing a pretty de decent job. He didn't hit his free throws, which is disappointing for him, but he was getting the ball in the post. And I do think there is an element of truth to that, that Rudy Gobert needs to get that ball and, and dunk it on these guys. Problem is we've seen him try and it just hasn't really worked. And Rudy Gobert now is in his, what, seventh, eighth, ninth season? Uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. It doesn't matter. But what, at a certain point, a player is who they are. You know, Rudy Gobert at this point kind of is who he is in terms of what he's able to do in the post. We have seen Rudy Gobert do post moves, and it just does not work out. It's not good. The points per possession is terrible. If we could go look it up right now, but what I the picture you would get is poop emoji. It's not good. Anytime Rudy Gobert does a post move, it just is terrible. It's just bad, guys. He can't do it. And I could go into second spectrum, and maybe I will, and go. And it, honestly, I don't want to, because what I've done is I've seen things with my eyes. These two eyes have seen it, and it's bad. It's bad, guys. So what you're asking Rudy Gobert to do in the post is just probably not something he can do. It's just something to kind of not hope for. I just personally don't believe it can happen. I've seen it. Like literally every single game of Rudy Gobert's career, I've watched mul some, some of them multiple times. I've done every single analytical piece about all the different efficiencies with Rudy Gobert. When he rolls to the rim and is, is rolling to the rim in a pick and roll, it's fantastic. When you give the ball to Rudy Gobert in the post and he has to do an isolation post move, it's doo-doo. It is where you fart and you don't know if it was worse than what it was. And usually it is when it's, when it's Rudy Gobert in the post. It's not very good. It just isn't. I'm being I'm being not nice. I actually feel bad. Maybe I'm being not nice to Rudy Gobert. But guess what? There is one thing that we have not seen Rudy Gobert do. And that is take corner threes. We see him doing it in practice. We've actually seen him do it for years. We watched Rudy Gobert three years ago in the Jazz Open practice uh, be on the winning team of the three-point contest. And he shot 50% from three in that in that uh open practice believe me you're a nerd and a loser like me when you're looking at percentages of open practice well guess what for the last two three years we've watched rudy gobert shoot corner threes in practice and he actually makes them with regularity if you go to a jazz game before the jazz game watch rudy gobert warm up and what he's going to do is shoot corner threes the thing is we haven't seen him do it yet and so my solution for this is actually have rudy gobert try it what, are, what have you got to lose? A Rudy Gobert post move isn't doing anything for you. It's just not. We haven't seen it be we haven't seen it be effective. We haven't seen it happen in the playoffs. And we could argue whether Rudy Gobert should be getting those opportunities more. Like maybe it's the, you know, Donovan Mitchell and Mike Conley need to do a better job of getting him, him the ball. Well, maybe, but guess what? If they haven't been able to do it in the past, are they suddenly magically going to be able to do it better now? I don't know, but I don't think it's something you can count on. And if if it's better for Donovan Mitchell to be shooting threes than passing the ball to Rudy Gobert in the post, then that's what you need to do. But guess what? If you have Rudy Gobert in the corner shooting threes, there's two benefits to that. One, if he shoots the three and he actually is good at it and makes them, that's a more efficient shot and a better shot than a post move anyway. Every analytic is going to tell you that. Corner three is the best shot in the league. That's why everyone is trying to set up that shot so you can get more corner threes because it's the, a shot that more people make more often. Uh, and it's it's just worth more points. Three points is more than two points, guys. That's the first benefit. What if Rudy Gobert shoots corner threes and he's actually like 36%? That would be incredible. But you know what would happen number two? Is the floor is spread. All of a sudden, if Rudy Gobert is shooting a corner three, that makes you a five-out spread team. It would have solved the problem with the Los Angeles Clippers last season. It would have, in, a, in the same way Rudy Gobert just posting up and punishing a Patrick Beverly or someone like that, if Rudy Gobert is out on the corner and he's an actual threat to shoot the three, that solves the problem. Because guess what the Jazz have? The Jazz have Donovan Mitchell and other guys, Jordan Clarkson, that can get to the hoop. And it makes it easier to score in the playoffs. So right there, you've solved the problem. The problem solved. Not in a way you thought. You know, it's easy to just say Rudy Gobert needs to turn into Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and hit hook shots. Well, guess what? Not a lot of people have been able to do that. We never saw Tyson Chandler do that, okay? And he's the same type of player. But if Rudy Gobert can shoot the corner three, all of a sudden, you just made life easier for all four other players on the floor. So that solves the problem. You know, it does. 
But guess what? All you have to do is have Rudy Gobert shoot it. Now, what people are going to say is, well, you know, it, by having Rudy Gobert sitting in the corner, that makes it difficult for him to, to actually do the other things which he does well, which is offensive rebound, which I agree. Rudy Gobert needs to not be just sitting in the corner the entire time on a possession. Uh, it, he, it keeps him from doing rolling to the rim and, and doing pick and rolls. I also agree with that. Rudy Gobert's best offensive skill is rolling to the rim. He's great at it. He's incredible, you know, but guess what? In the playoffs, it is a game of counters and, and, and offenses and trying different things. When the, when the Los Angeles Clippers are taking away the effectiveness of Rudy Gobert, because they are backing off of every pick and roll and forcing Rudy Gobert, uh, taking away his role and forcing the Jazz ball handlers into bad shots, you need to find a counter. And guess what that counter is? Go put Rudy Gobert in the corner. Uh, have Rudy Gobert setting picks, and then instead of rolling to the rim every time, have him pop out. And if that takes the big out of the paint, all of a sudden Donovan Mitchell is going to the rim and scoring. All of a sudden Jordan Clarkson's getting to the rim. We now see Jared Butler. Jared Butler looks like he can have a crossover, a nasty crossover that's going to help him get to the rim. And if there's no rim protector there, that's an easy bucket. And you've just solved the problem that you had in the playoffs last year by having this floor spaced. It's not the way people really expect it, but it's actually a solution that solves the problem in a different way. And guess what? Rudy Gobert being able to shoot threes creates a five-out offense, which is a completely different look than the, what the Jazz typically have on the floor. And having a different look like that forces the opposing defense to actually think. That's the thing that's so hard is like when you are playing in the playoffs Every little advantage you get in the playoffs matters. And so if you're a defense and you know exactly what the Jazz are going to do, you get better at guarding it every single time. And so if the Jazz offense is solely having Rudy Gobert roll to the rim, which during the regular season and for a lot of a game, even in the playoffs, is going to be effective. But if it's all you do every single possession, if a defense finds out little ways to solve that problem and little ways they can defend it to make it just a little bit harder. And, and they have, they find defenders who guard it better than others. And so they, they play those guys more and more and more kind of like the Clippers did when they started playing Terrence Mann more and more and more because they found out it gave them advantages. It makes life easier on them. It's much easier to defend when you know exactly what the other team is going to do. If it's an efficient thing, the other team does, it's still hard, but guess what? If you know exactly what they're going to do, you get better at guarding it every single time, right? I mean, it just it's just obvious. Like if, if in a seven game series, you know exactly what the Utah Jazz are going to do every single game. It doesn't, it makes a lot of sense that the last two years, two teams have figured it out and then eventually sweep the Jazz, right? And so if you have another look that you can throw out there where you say, instead of just running the pick and roll with Rudy Gobert every time, maybe one out of every three times we have Rudy Gobert sit on the corner and we run a different set and we do something where a guard setting a pick for a guard and whoever gets the ball goes to the rim. Mike Conley going and get a floater or just going straight to the rim. You know, if the Utah Jazz can have Rudy Gobert sitting in the corner and then can hunt the worst defender of the opposing team, you can find ways to score with ease. And so I personally think that if Quinn Snyder wants to have uh, a successful playoffs this year, Rudy Gobert needs to be taking corner threes here and there. I want to see Rudy Gobert take one to two threes every game. He doesn't need to take more than that. But if you can get Rudy Gobert through an entire 82 game season, by game 82, he's comfortable taking one or two threes and maybe shooting 33, 36%. That's massive. Because not that doesn't change your offense. Obviously, Rudy Gobert is still going to be rolling to the rim and running uh, pick and rolls. But if you have a, occasions where you go out and you just have Rudy Gobert going in the corner and the opposing defense has to think on their feet and guard that, you're going to find mistakes and take advantage of them. And then you can win a series and get out of the second round and go to the Western Conference Finals. The Utah Jazz need to do it, guys. That's the answer. And if you disagree with me, disagree with me, let me know in the comments. But if you're going to be nice, I might block you. All right? So anyways, guys, you guys are amazing. Thank you for watching the channel. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the video and join. So when you're on the live streams, you can join the chat. It's really fun. And you can also support the channel. Guys, I will talk to you next time.